Hello, I'm Alfred Cutner. I'm a consultant gynaecologist and I'm a medical ambassador for the charity, the Endometriosis Foundation, which is also known as Women with Endometriosis. This video is going to explain referral pathways for women with suspected or proven endometriosis. In 2008, when I was president of the British Society for Gynaecological Endoscopy, we set up endometriosis centres. The aims of these centres were to deliver high quality care for women with severe endometriosis within a multidisciplinary network consisting of gynaecologists, colorectal surgeons, urologists and pain management experts. They also had input from fertility, experts, good diagnostics. Nurse specialists played a central role in the patient pathway. However, not all women will have severe endometriosis and overall they're estimated to be about 1.5 million women in the UK with endometriosis and they all need to access good and appropriate care. The NICE guidance was published in 2017 and set up these care pathways. I was one of the specialist advisors on this committee. The guidance developed these pathways for women with suspected or proven endometriosis. So a woman who feels she may have endometriosis due to her symptoms, the first port of call is the general practitioner. There they will have a trial of analgesics or hormone manipulation with treatments such as a combined contraceptive pill or the mini pill to see how the symptoms are managed. If there's a good response, then there is no need for referral onward to other centres. However, if there are symptoms or signs of severe disease or after a short treatment the woman fails to respond, then she needs to be referred on. Those women with suspected severe disease would be referred to an endometriosis centres, but others would be referred on to secondary care. Secondary care centres are gynaecologists with a special interest in endometriosis, working with nurse specialists, but not in an MDT network, but they need to have access to good diagnostics and MRI to enable diagnoses to be made. If severe endometriosis is diagnosed on scan or MRI, then the woman will be referred on to a specialist tertiary care centre. However, if severe endometriosis is excluded, then care would take place in the secondary care setting. The gynaecologist needs to take into account the patient's symptom pattern and the diagnostic reports to help determine with the woman whether or not she should undergo a laparoscopy. Of course, we all know that laparoscopy is the only way to firmly confirm that endometriosis is present or to exclude it and therefore you might think that all women with pain should have a laparoscopy. However the risks and benefits of all operations and even a diagnostic procedure can result in life-changing complications. So there is a need to work with the woman to help determine how likely the diagnosis is and how likely treatment is to benefit her in terms of her symptoms to help determine whether the risks are worth the benefits. The gynaecologist in the secondary care centre needs to have the expertise to excise mild and moderate endometriosis. If the woman undergoes an a laparoscopy and severe endometriosis is found, then they would be referred on to a tertiary level centre. These centres manage women with proven disease, either on diagnostic scans or MRI or on laparoscopy. The centres are expensive and they bring together a lot of personnel from different disciplines. The number of cases performed each year in the centre needs to be sufficient such the centre maintains and develops its skills and to make sure there is facilities and capacity for women with severe disease. And this is why not all women with endometriosis should be treated in the centre and only those women with proven severe disease. Thus, the centres need to be ring fenced for this group of women. However, there needs to be adequate funding for the secondary care centres to have good diagnostics and gynaecologists who are able to treat women with mild and moderate disease. So in summary, a woman would start her journey with a general practitioner and move to secondary care if symptomatic treatment is insufficient after a short trial. Those women with mild or moderate disease would be managed in the secondary care centre and those women with severe disease would be managed in the multidisciplinary tertiary level centres. In secondary care, it is important to help work out with the woman whether or not a laparoscopy is justified, looking at the risks and the benefits. After surgery in a tertiary care centre, women would ideally be referred back to the secondary care centre for ongoing medical treatment to release capacity for other women to be treated in these centres. 
at all levels, funding needs to be adequate for both the GP, the secondary care and the tertiary care centres. There's another group of women who are a small group of women with endometriosis that need to be managed differently. And this is younger women, as in girls and adolescents, who have pain and symptoms suggestive of severe or even moderate endometriosis. Ideally, these girls are investigated and managed in a centre that combines a gynaecologist with expertise in paediatric and adolescent gynaecology, together with a gynaecologist with an interest in endometriosis. In teenagers, there are other causes of pain, as well as some congenital conditions that result in endometriosis, and this is why this group of girls should be treated outside the main centres, but be treated in centres which incorporate paediatric and adolescent gynaecologists. I hope that overall this video has outlined the different treatment pathways that both women and girls need to go through to help them access appropriate and high quality care. The Endometriosis Foundation is helping to raise awareness around endometriosis and part of this is the ability to obtain good and appropriate care. Thank you.